Here on the Trading Coach Podcast, we talk a lot about accelerating your wealth, not just through trading, but by finding other forms of supplemental income as well. Well, an easy way to do that is by sharing your story by using Spotify for Podcast. Not only do they allow you to record and edit right from your phone or computer, but they'll also shoot it out everywhere that podcasts are heard and even pay you to do it, which still doesn't make sense, but hey, we'll take it, right? Video podcasts are also available as well, which is a really cool option if you're into sharing your charts and stuff like that. Best of all, it's free. So as someone who measures risk reward for a living, this is a no brainer. So if you're ready to create, don't wait, download the Spotify for podcasters app right now, or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Speaking of getting started, let's get started with the show. Hey guys, Akil Stokes here. Welcome back to another episode of the Trading Coach Podcast. In today's episode, we're going to talk about how to survive and thrive in trading. Now, before we get into things, one of the reasons that the Trading Coach Podcast has been able to survive and really thrive this long in a a very crowded space of trading-related podcasts is because of the support that you guys give. Not only feeding me topics that I can spit my opinions back at you, but supporting the show and sharing the show as well. And I want you guys to keep it up. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you leave me a rating and a review. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, whatever you need to do on whatever podcasting app you're listening to this on. And please share this with a friend. So if you have a trading buddy out there that's looking for help, maybe they need some assistance, maybe they're stuck, forward them to the Trading Coach podcast, either an episode of your choosing or just the podcast in general, and then let them have at this buffet of trading information. This is one of my favorite times of the year. July has just started, which means it is Tour de France time. Now, I know a lot of you guys listening to the podcast aren't sports nerds, and for you guys that are sports nerds, most of you probably can care less about cycling, but the Tour de France is a very special place in my heart for a few reasons. One, I am a cyclist myself, so you know I can appreciate it kind of just like watching golf. You know, Being a golfer, for if you can call it that, for a little bit made me appreciate watching golf and seeing what these pros are doing. Being a cyclist myself makes me appreciate kind of what these guys are doing and how hard it is. I also love kind of the aerial views. I'm kind of like a, a, a world nerd. Natural Geographic is one of my favorite channels where they do like aerial overview shots of like farmland and historic stuff. So I kind of like that they give me that aspect of it as well, the Tour de France. And then finally, it kind of brings me back to a, an awesome part in my trading career. Back when I first started trading, I used to fly out to uh, Kansas, so a, a different state for uh, some long periods of time and, and spend time with my trading mentor. I remember we'd be in the office all day trading, then talking trading and reviewing, then eating as always. And um, it was always during the summer. So we always had the Tour de France on in the background. And my trading mentor used to be a bike nerd as well. So we really made a lot of comparisons between that, the trading, which really helped me in my learning process because I'm a, a sports nerd. So I was able to understand it. So what I want to do today is kind of make those same comparisons to you. And I'm going to make it, make them as dumb as possible because I know a lot of you guys don't care about the tour, don't know about the tour, but there really are some cool parallels here. And first and foremost, the the Tour de France is a 21 stage bike tour where they're biking hundreds and hundreds of miles, right? It is a complete torture on your leg and mind and body and everything else. And it's one of those things that lasts basically the entire month of July. So it's not just like a a one race. Um, These are hundreds of riders lining up for a full month of racing with the victor being whoever has the fastest time at the end. Now, there are different types of riders in the Tour de France, right? Just like there are different types of track athletes, right? There are sprinters and climbers. And this is a very good comparison to the fact that there are different types of traders out there, right? There are day traders, there are swing traders, there are intraday traders, there are traders who are fundamentally driven, there are traders who are technically driven, there are traders who are classic chartists, there are traders who are indicator users, there are counter trend, there are trend continuation traders, Traders, right? There's so many different types of traders out there. And I know very early on in my career, the internet made me believe that 
if I didn't pick a specific one, I was wrong. And uh, that hindered my, you know, really hindered my my uh, my progress in trading for a very long time because I, I felt inclined to do something that wasn't a natural fit, but I was so afraid to do something else because everyone was telling me that, hey, this was the thing that I had to do and every other way would never get me to where I want it to be. The truth is, you can have success in many different ways of trading. And if you haven't done so already, I recommend reading a book and reading a series called Market Wizards. It, they are interviews of the greatest traders ever. And there's some valuable insight in there. But one of the best things that I pulled from those reads were that every trader was different. Everyone came from a different situation. Everyone had a different approach, but they shared one thing in common. They were all successful. And that's really what allowed me to break out of that mindset that, hey, I have to do this one thing and I can do multiple things and still be successful. So whether you want to be a sprinter or a climber, whether you want to be a scalper or a day trader, you know, you know, or a swing trader, whether you want to be fundamental or technical, understand that you can be successful with both. Now, also in the Tour de France, the, the I guess the, the grouping of cyclists are often broke, broken into two different sections. There is the Peloton, which is kind of the, the main big grouping. And then there is the Breakout. The Breakout is a small grouping of cyclists that kind of break away from the main group and try to go for the win. And this is an interesting kind of dynamic, especially when it relates to trading, because I look at this as being in the Peloton, you're a, a trader that's looking for slow, boring, consistent results, right? If you ever watch me trade or watch how we teach trading, we're not going for these big, massive results. We're basically trying to sneak our hand in the cookie jar. We're trying to grab a little crumb. We're trying to get out without getting caught. And we're trying to do that over and over and over again. And typically, no win makes you really happy, right? It's not a, a life-changing win. Your account doesn't go into the millions on a, a single victory. You kind of don't even notice it. Um, now, you notice it at the end, right, when all of those things kind of accumulate. But as far as a win-by-win -win basis, kind of slow, boring, and, and not sexy. Again, the exact opposite of what you will see on the internet. However, Every once in a while, we've had a few this year, which we've been very excited about. If you watch the YouTube channel, a lot of the end pairs, um, pound Swiss, pound yen, euro yen, dollar yen, we've been calling home run trades all over the place. But every once in a while, we go for what's called a home run trade. And these are trading situations with larger than normal profit potential. So these are the ones where, you know, if, again, if you've seen something online or if you've seen a an ad before a youtube video about hey i made this much percent on a single trade and here's how you can do this on a daily basis well the truth is you probably can't do that consistently on a daily basis but those gains are real um, maybe not necessarily the people selling you whatever they're selling you online but you can have big 10 percent, 20 percent days on, on single trades that is possible but the thing is you have to know when to go for them because just like in Major League Baseball, right? If you want to swing for defenses, you're basically, it's a, it's a guess, but it's a highly educated guess. But if you miss, you're most likely to strike out. So it's kind of an all or nothing approach. So if you can if you can imagine yourself trying to go for a home run trade every single time you enter a trade, what you're going to do is you're going to fill yourself up with losses. Um, You'll probably hit a home run eventually, but by the time you hit it, you'll probably sabotage yourself because you'll be too concerned with just making up or digging yourself out of the hole that, that your previous trades got you into and you won't actually allow that trade to play out to its maximum potential, right? Trust me, you lose enough trades in a row, you start going through some psychological drama and that affects your winners and then you're mad because you didn't see your winner all the way out and then that affects all types of other stuff, right? We've done plenty of podcasts on that. So... If you're going for the home run trade, you have to be very specific, very deliberate with what you're looking for. And you have to be a good chartist. You have to do good analysis, whether it's technical, fundamental, or a combination of both, and make sure that this situation has a high percentage or high, uh, a higher chance than usual 
of fulfilling that home run prophecy, right? And we bring this back to the Tour de France, right? It's very strategic with which riders go for the breakout, right? So the riders know the course up and down. They know if it's flat, they know if it's hilly, they know what types of hill it is, they know if it's a, a downhill, they know if it's bendy. And when a rider decides to go for the breakout, they're looking for a course that fits their strength, right? So let's say like, I am a really good descender, meaning that I can I can climb good, obviously, but I can also go down hills. I'm, I'm reckless, I'm fast. And, and no one can catch me, right? And we have a course that has a, uh, a pretty decent hill in it, but then a really long descend into the finish. Well, this may be the course that I decide to go for the breakout, right? Because I know I can climb that hill. And if I can get to that hill before everyone else, I know that no one's going to catch me going down it because I'm the fastest descender. So that would be a, a, a course or a, a trade, I guess, where I would go for a home run. If it's a completely flat phase or a phase that finishes on an uphill, I probably don't want to waste my strength going for it because it doesn't fit my strengths. Therefore, the, the opportunity of pulling it off are less and then I'm, I'm in a bad situation. So that's very important in trading as well is, yes, I know we want to get away from the boring returns. We want the things that we can brag about and get all excited about, but understand we need to be very strategic with when, where, and how we go for it. Another part of the Tour de France before we get to the, the big thing is that there are different ways to win. I put up this question on social media the other day. Um, I did a podcast on this as well, but I said, do you have to be great to be successful? And I was uh, pleasantly surprised. It was rolling like a day into the poll, but about 77% of the responders said no. You can be successful without being great. And this was another mind shift that I had in trading. I thought that in order to be a successful trader or a success story in general, I had to be a superstar. I had to be the best of the best. I had to be the the Messi, the 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 Jordan, the Jeter, right? Those type of people. The Jeter wasn't the best of the best, but you guys get what I'm saying. I had to be a superstar in order to be successful. And throughout my years of trading, and I've been doing this since 2007, I've learned and accepted that, hey, I'm not a super trader, right? I'm a consistently profitable trader. I've done quite well for myself and, and put myself in a situation where I can change my life and live on my own terms and, and do something I love and have financial freedom and have freedom of time, which checks all the boxes. But by no means am I a, a super trader, right? One of the reasons I never signed up for any of these trading competitions that you guys try to sucker me into is because I won't win. My trading style is not meant to win. It is it is the Peloton. It, 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 it is slow. It is boring, right? It's not going to get these massive returns, but I can consistently churn out money year in and year out. And, and, and that's successful for me. And in the Tour de France, right, there is something called the GC. There's a general classification that is like the overall winner. They win on time. But there are other categories as well. There's best young rider, there's best climber, there's best sprinter, there's most aggressive rider on a daily basis, right? So you can be successful in the Tour de France. It's a, it's a team sport event too, so you can just be part of a team that wins the overall team title. You can be successful in the Tour de France even if you aren't wearing the yellow jersey, even if you aren't the overall winner at the end of the 21 stages. And again, that goes back to kind of knowing yourself. Some people are meant for that that yellow jersey. Some people are meant to go for the win. And, and when that happens, you know, your team tries to put you in position to go for the win. Other people aren't going for the win at all. Maybe they go for a single stage win. Maybe they go for points here or there, but they have a specific role and they try to accomplish that specific role to the best of their ability. And if they do, it is a win. You know, For many people, it's a win just to be in the Tour de France. It's so competitive to get into. Lastly, as I mentioned earlier, the Tour de France is a 21 stage tour throughout an entire month with only a few rest days sprinkled in there. It's horrible. Um, so it is truly a marathon and not a sprint. And what this means is that one great day can't necessarily win you the race. Again, we have we have stage winners all over the place. For the, the most part, the person that wins the overall kind of um, time-based win doesn't win the most stages, right? So you can win one stage, you can win two stages, you can win three stages, you can win all the sprint stage, and guess what? there's a good chance that you probably won't win the Tour de France, right? So just having one good day won't get you a win. But one bad day 
can lose it all. You have one day where you get dropped and you're left behind and now you're down by however many minutes, you may never be able to come back from that because the deficit is too much. You have a day where unfortunately you crash or do something like that. You may be so so behind that you never get back into it. And trading is very similar, right? You can have one great day in trading. You can have one great week in trading. We've all had that before, but bigger picture, that doesn't mean that you're going to have a positive year, right? It's all about consistency. And typically what you see with the winner of the Tour de France is that they don't have bad days. They have a few days where they attack and they, 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 they state their name and whatnot. But for the most part, they're just always in the mix. That yellow jersey and yellow helmet is just always in the front somewhere, never getting left behind. And they're just kind of steady fretting. And every once in a while, like home run trade, boom, they go for it and try to increase their lead. But just like that in trading, you have one bad day, one bad day where you try to get revenge, one bad day where you try to get cute, you don't put a stop on, you move stops back, or you try to trade a news event because a friend gave you an insider secret. You can lose it all. And I've spoken to so many traders, unfortunately, that have, that have had good days, good weeks, and good months and have lost it in, boom, a snap of the finger, all because of poor risk management. So my mentor always told me this. He said, Trading is like poker, right, Akil? We want to have a chip in a chair, which means that as long as you have a chip, as long as you have money, right, in the game, you can play the game. You are allowed at the poker table. And as long as you can play the game, you have an opportunity to win at the game. But if you were to go broke, you are no longer allowed at that table. And therefore, you no longer have an opportunity to make anything back. And that is the damage of blowing your account. Obviously, if you blow everything in your account, margin call, right? You, you can't trade. You have no capital to trade with. But even if you blow a significant amount, and, and I wish I had the graph in front of me on this, but if you get a chance, Google search, um, I don't even know what it would be called, uh, maybe a, a, a drawdown graph, but it, 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 it's a pretty cool list of the percentage or uh, I guess comparison of the percentage that you lose and then how much percentage you have to win to make up for that loss. Because you would think, hey, if I take a 5% drawdown, I'll just try to make 5% next week. Well, it's not actually that easy. You, you basically have to make double just to get back to like break even. And by the time you get the break even, maybe your win streak's done and then you go back down. So it, it's extremely hard. The deeper the hole you dig yourself into, the harder it is to get out of that hole. Um, so risk management is crucial. You just wanna stay with the pack. So if, I were to compare my trading style to a Tour de France, I, I wouldn't be going for the general classification. I wouldn't be going for the win. I would be a steady Freddy. I would be someone that is in the mix, always in the mix, very risk averse, staying out of trouble, staying off the back, not trying to necessarily win the sprints and get knocked off my bike and get injured and be out the game. But someone that very strategically chooses his moments, maybe one or two stages in the tour to kind of get involved with that breakout and go for it. And if it looks like an opportunity where I may get away, boom, I laid a hammer down and I really go for that big win. If it looks like an opportunity where it's not gonna happen, well, I don't waste any gas. I settle right back in the pack and I save it for another day. So hope you guys enjoyed the podcast again, sports nerd talk, but I hope this gives new traders kind of an overall view of what trading really is, right? You can take the sports stuff out of it and just think of the kind of the trading examples I gave you, but this should help you on your path of, of hopefully, hopefully giving you more of a realistic view of what it looks like to be a consistently profitable trader. We're not talking about the, the BS people online that are doing it for a month and then you never hear from them again. We're talking about tried, true, tested, consistently profitable traders that have been in these games for years and for decades and aren't going away anytime soon. Hope you enjoyed the podcast. Hey, if you want to get on track in becoming a consistently profitable trader, check out our website. We've trained many of them, www.tier1trading.com. Mentioned in Forbes Magazine as being one of the innovators in trading education. Forbes knows exactly what to talk about and so do we. So check us out. Take the 14-day trial. Make sure to write fit before making any type of commitment. That's www.tier1trading.com.